I have tried in this program to say something about American civilization today because what is fiercely in dispute between the communist and the non-communist nations is the quality and staying power of American civilization. Every other country scorns American materialism while striving to match it. Envy obviously has something to do with it, but there is a true basis for this debate, and it is whether America is in its ascendant or its decline. I myself think I recognize several of the symptoms that Edward Gibbon saw so acutely in the decline of Rome, which arise not from external enemies, but from inside the country itself. A love of show and luxury, a widening gap between the very rich and the very poor, freakishness in the arts masquerading as originality, and enthusiasm pretending to creativeness, and a general desire to live off the state. In a word, the idea that Washington, Big Daddy, will provide. NerdErotic.com Hollywood used to be the pinnacle of magic, imagination, and creativity, and also a bit of a cesspool. Now it's where imagination goes to die, and quite frankly, it doesn't really exist anymore. I know we call it Hollywood, but it's actually woke Hollywood. But occasionally, and I mean rarely, someone from the tribe breaks from the narrative, and we get something good, proper, right that feels like it makes sense. Sometimes it comes from somebody who talks out both sides of their mouth, like Bill Maher. In this case, that's exactly who we're talking about. It still doesn't make what he says any less true. I firmly believe Billy Boy doesn't go this far if he doesn't feel those winds of change a-blowing, which they are. If you're part of today's woke revolution, you need to study the part of revolutions where they spin out of control because the revolutionaries get so drunk on their own purifying elixir they imagine they can reinvent the very nature of human beings. I believe he's talking about the slippery slope that a lot of us have been warning of for quite some time. Up is down, black is white, evil is good, two plus two equals five, biology's a construct. Just ask J.K. Rowling how she's dealing with her minor annoyances while she's counting all her money from her hit game. For simply stating that biology is this real thing and not really much more than that. Now you might ask, what does this have to do with woke Hollywood? absolutely everything. Communists thought selfishness, selfishness, could be cast out of human nature. Russian revolutionaries spoke of the new Soviet man who wasn't motivated by self-interest, but instead wanted to be part of a collective. No, it turns out he wanted to be on a yacht in a Gucci tracksuit holding a vodka and a prostitute. <laughs> And as Bill says, he didn't want to stand all day in a line for a potato, but it remains mind-boggling that so much of woke Hollywood supports this. Get vaccinated, to wear masks, to do social distancing, washing your hands all the time. Screw your freedom. And they're not alone. They now have their friends in big tech and major corporations. And quite frankly, this is an old problem in Hollywood that the great Razor Fist has pointed out in two videos, which will be linked in the description. The problem with communism and with some very recent ideologies here at home is that they think you can change reality by screaming at it, that you can bend human nature by holding your breath. But that's the difference between reality and your mommy. Or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. And some of the biggest purveyors of the cult of the woke revolution are actors or adult pretenders. All lives do matter, and that black lives have got to be lifted up. Then you should be out. You should be the first one out on the street. You know? Step up and take action. I know that a lot of you people at home want to reach for your remote when you feel like Hollywood is preaching to you. I have to be honest, if things had gone differently this past week in Minneapolis, I might have traded in my heels for marching boots. People who pretend professionally for a living who mostly, not all, are a bunch of empty-headed morons who just get downloaded the latest information from Twitter or their assistant who watched three minutes of MSNBC. Last year, I spoke to Anthony Hopkins and he said, actors are stupid. And uh, your favorite dish? My favorite dish? I like mugs because they're 
very comfortable in your hand and they hold the hot things that you don't have to touch. So, um, you know, coffee or hot tea. Over the past year and a half, I've been doing some healing and self-reflective work. And through this work, I've had the revelation that I identify as non-binary. Two hours later. And so I've adopted she, her again. Nobody's perfect. Everyone messes up pronouns at some point. No. I got, I ha went to Indiana Jones and Jaws and every movie that Steven Spielberg's ever made. And by the way, he's never made a movie with a female lead. Sorry, Steven. I don't mean to call your ass out, but it's true. The color purple, thank you. Okay, I'm wrong. Um... <laughs> 你好,中国,就是叫西呢,我爱跟尊重中国跟中国人,我很很抱歉,对我的错误,对不起,对不起,我很抱歉。Nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie, because it wouldn't work. We were told. Girls and boys can both identify with a male lead. But boys cannot identify with a female lead. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us. Living for today. Yeah. <laughs> Lincoln once said that you can repeal all past history, but you still cannot repeal human nature. But he's canceled now, so f him. Now, someone from Hollywood, or in particular Bill Maher, calling out cancel culture, which quite frankly he's been pretty consistent on, to be fair, isn't that rare, and I didn't mean that to rhyme. Someone from Hollywood generally calling out communism is. And what's even more rare is somebody specifically going after the CCP. That's like finding a based unicorn. Yesterday I asked ChatGPT, are there any similarities between today's woke revolution and Chairman Mao's cultural revolution of the 1960s? And it wrote back, how long do you have? <laughs> Isn't it nice we can all chuckle about that when just about a year or two ago when any of us brought it up, we were called racists and white supremacists. Welcome to the alt-right pipeline, Bill Maher. In terms of cancel culture, I, 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 I think it's misnamed. That's a misnomer. I think we have a consequence culture and that consequences are finally encompassing everybody in the society, whereas um, they haven't been. Uh, ever in this country. So um, I, th I think that there, there are good signs that are happening in the culture right now. And I think it has everything to do with a new awareness on people who were simply unaware of the real nature of life in this country for people who have been othered since this nation began. And I would be remiss not to bring up who isn't laughing. All of the people who lost their careers and sometimes their lives looking at you, Zoe Quinn, thanks to these woke activist mobs. Because again, in China, we saw how a revolutionary thought he could do a page one rewrite of humans. Mao ordered his citizens to throw off the four olds, old thinking, old culture, old customs, and old habits. So um, your whole life went in the garbage overnight, no biggie. It's time to let old things die. The past is dead. Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. We either move forward or we die with it. And yes, Hollywood is very much pushing that message, particularly through very expensive IPs. In some cases, it's subtle. In some cases, it's right in your face. And those who resisted were attacked by an army of purifiers called the Red Guard who went around the country putting dunce caps on people. Yeah, who didn't take to being a new kind of mortal being. A lot of pointing and shaming went on. Oh, and about a million dead. And the only way to survive was to plead insanity for the crime of being insufficiently radical, then apologize and thank the state for the chance to see what a piece of shit you are. And of course, submit to re-education, or as we call it here in America, freshman orientation. <laughs> Now, Bill gives a couple of examples of cancel culture, including the banjo player from Mumford & Sons 
and an instructor from a university, which are terrible, but I have a couple concerning entertainment, including one where the giant corporation did bend the knee and one where they didn't. And we'll start with Gina Carano. Mandalorian star Gina Carano has been fired. The news follows a social media post where Carano had implied that being a Republican today is comparable to being Jewish in Nazi Germany. So when I posted that, you know, it wasn't something that I felt like was um, controversial. Uh, it was something that I thought, well, maybe all of us need to ask ourselves how that happened. The Post never said anything about Republicans or conservatives. It doesn't say anything about that in there. It's, it was more about like, you know, people tearing each other apart. This was not the first time Disney had been upset by her social media posts. Last year, when some celebrities started adding their preferred pronouns to their Twitter bios, uh, like he, him, or she, her, or they, Gina added beep, bop, boop. I ended up putting beep, bop, boop in my Twitter bio. It was 100% to go to the Twitter mob that was telling you what to do. Um, and it had zero to do with trying to go after the, the transgendered community. Lucasfilm called me and they were like, okay, we're gonna need you to get, um, go on a Zoom call with 45 of our, you know, LGBTQ, you know, community. And we need to have you watch all of these movies about the trans lives um, documentaries. And, and I was like, okay, I'll watch your documentaries and I'll talk to your people, um, but I'm not gonna get on a Zoom call with 45 different people who can have their phones out videotaping me. And I feel like that's extremely abusive. That can't be undersold that Disney wanted Gina Carano, the very thing they pretend to champion, the strong female character, to go through a 40-person Zoom struggle session. You gotta tell them now that we can work this out. Please, please. You're too stupid to see. He made up his mind 10 minutes ago. Gina was in the right to tell Disney to go f themselves because they would have fired her anyway. And things have been downhill for Disney ever since. You're a woman, Harry. I'm a what? You're a rotting woman. What? On the other hand, there's J.K. Rowling, who generally agrees with 99.9% .9 of what the woke mob believes, but it's that 0.1% that they disagree on that not only needs to get her canceled, they need to end her. He's a little unhinged. Unfortunately, that minuscule amount of people have failed miserably. Hogwarts Legacy is a massive hit. The Wizarding World at both Universal Parks is constantly packed, selling crap loads of merchandise, and the last time I checked, she sells a hell of a lot of books. In hindsight, it makes Disney look as cowardly and dumb as some of us always thought they were. And all of what the kids call today the cope over the failed Hogwarts Legacy boycott has been glorious. Everything woke turns to shit, okay? It's true. It's true. Look at what's happening. While it does feel like woke Hollywood is putting the audience through a struggle session, I firmly believe we are in a period of acceleration or peak woke Hollywood. That is a good thing because it'll end it faster. Let's go over some examples just from the past three or four months. AOC's climate change documentary flopped. Bros flopped. The repurposed woke lore shattering Witcher blood origin was a massive failure. You can also apply that to the abominations that were Willow and She-Hulk. The massively woke Strange Worlds flopped. And it turns out the revisionist history Woman King flopped as well because not making your money back is a flop. Is that this movie cost $50 million to make. They spent at least another $75 million on marketing. When you factor in the box office cut, because you know theaters get a portion of that money too, they're sitting at $125 million needed to break even. And who could forget the hateful and cringe Velma? Why would Fred kill Brenda just because she photographed him in the bathroom? Why wouldn't he? If I were a rich white dude, I'd kill everybody just to get away with it. Not to be outdone by Warner Brothers, Disney has decided to re purse their own version of a cartoon for the modern audience, which might be the most divisive thing I've ever seen. 
This country was built on slavery, which means slaves built this country. And we, the descendants of slaves in America, have earned reparations for their suffering. And continue to earn reparations every moment we spend submerged in the systemic prejudice, racism, and white, white supremacy. supremacy. Slaves built this country. And we demand our 40 acres and a mule. Bump that. You can keep the mule. Keep the 40. We're taking our freedom. Hell nah. Hell to the f nah. Isn't it weird how all these modern audiences and new voices that Hollywood wants to hear from are all saying the same thing? And it all sounds eerily like the four olds that Bill Maher just mentioned from the CCP. Not to worry, Brian Cranston, another woke Hollywood moron, completely agrees. It's time. It's 400 years that we've dealt with this oh. and our country still has not taken responsibility for the history of the systemic racism that's in this country. What should we do more? Critical race theory I think is essential to be teaching. And a lot of woke Hollywood spouting this crap doesn't even have kids, and if they do, they don't raise them or send them to public schools. The pop culture war is part of the greater culture war, that same culture war that has been denied by the very people perpetuating it. The access media, the mainstream media, big tech, big Hollywood, and most of our government. Why admit to something when it's working so well and so many people will just lap up whatever these institutions say and take it at face value? How did we get here? How were so many woke activists able to infiltrate so many corporations that particularly provide our entertainment and information? The answer is easy, apathy. From classic liberals to libertarians to anarcho-capitalists to conservatives, as many of us have been saying for a long, long time, a lot of the powers that be in all of those organizations and specifically the political pundits completely missed the mark on this one because they underestimated the cultural importance of music, television, film, comic books, and yes, video games. The latter two dismissed as childish, and that's why we all keep losing. As sad as it is, your average empty-headed adult pretender and musician happens to be very influential, as well as the giant corporations that own them. The good news is, there are some people who get it, from Razor Fist to Betty Johnson to this guy. Entertainment is actually a critical cultural pillar. I mean, look, they were putting on plays in Roman times. We have TV now. It's part of guiding your culture for what you want them to be and what you don't want them to be. More than anything, this is a reflection of what our culture has become. Just a big bunch of grievance mongering whiners. Everybody has something they hate about America. America sucks because of this and it sucks because of that. And pop culture is just one facet of the greater culture. And we have walked away from too many things things and not paid attention and now things are more divisive than ever at least in my lifetime now i remember when bill maher used to say things like i miss the old republicans who were just old guys who guarded your money and well times have changed i miss the old liberal democrats who were just slightly flaky neurotic do-gooders who wanted to hug a tree save a whale and were really into things like preserving free speech and free expression in all of its forms. Now the activists are in charge of the asylum and God, it makes me miss the regular old Hollywood lunatics who were just coked out. That's right, I said it, coke over woke. You say you want a revolution? Well, you know, we all want to change the world. But if you go carrying pictures of Chairman Mao, you ain't gonna make it with anybody anyhow. There's a guy who understood how good intentions can turn into the insane arrogance of thinking your revolution is so f***ing awesome and your generation is so mind-bendingly improved that you have bequeathed the world with a new kind of human. You're welcome. I'll never forget when Hollywood was rooting on the Summer of Love and Bad Reboot was saying things like, no more white comfort, or it's just property, or people in Hollywood while we were locked down and couldn't go to work, when they could, were saying, why don't you just order Uber Eats? Sure looks like a lot of you haven't forgotten that either. It appears that the US taxpayer movie theater bailout didn't work and AMC is forced to go to a European tiered pricing system, probably because almost half of the ticket buying audience has disappeared. The massive losses continue. Netflix CEO resigns and we just got the news from Disney that they lost 2.4 million subscribers, their first major loss, and they're firing 7,000 employees. 
former big time execs like Barry Diller are saying things like the Oscars are over and the movie business is finished. Strange, Hollywood spent the last five or six years telling half of their audience to f*** off and it turns out they did. And this is all largely due to trying to shove the woke square peg into the round hole of reality. And as the paying customer that was taken for granted abandons Hollywood, the money is drying up and it turns out pretty hard to have a woke revolution without capitalism. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. Oh, there's one other thing. Every man and woman or child I've ever known, met, seen, or heard of wants one thing more than anything else in the world. That one thing is tomorrow. Tomorrow, that's the only thing any of us have going for us. And I believe this. If tomorrow all of us, every single one of us, gets out of bed and says, this is my country and I'm going to do good for it, we'll make the greatest step forward since a pilgrim's foot found Plymouth Rock. Tomorrow, remember, this is my country and I'm going to do good for it. Just might work. We'll never know unless we give it a fair try. Oh yeah, and there's one other thing I'll say tomorrow because I say it every day of my life. God bless America. God bless America. My